It's no secret that growing dragon fruit is one of my absolute favorite things to do in the garden. I've dedicated an entire alley to it here at the homestead, but there are some key mistakes you can make when growing them, which is what we're going over in today's video. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. Now again, dragon fruit, one of the easier plants to grow, at least in my experience, provided you have the climate for it, of course. But again, it grows for a long time, and if you don't set it up for success correctly, well, then you're not gonna have an epic harvest of those dragon fruits. So we're gonna go over five different mistakes that you might be making growing your dragon fruit. And at the very end of the video, Richard from Grafting Dragon Fruit is gonna come in with an extra bonus tip. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And without further ado, cultivate that like button and I will personally breed a dragon fruit variety in your honor and let's get into the video. Mistake number one has to do with something very simple, that's pot size. A lot of the people who send me their dragon fruit problems in Instagram or YouTube or email, they're sending me a huge dragon fruit, maybe something this big, that's in a pot that's this big, it's pretty small. So dragon fruit, they want a big pot, especially when you're setting them up to grow for three, four, five, six years. I would say a pot that's at least 20 gallons. This one I believe is 25 gallons. These are a little bit taller than they are wide, just kind of a nice aesthetic look. I chose terracotta. I want it to drain out. It's a tropical cactus, so it does like a little more water than your average cactus, but still not an absolute ton. But the real benefit of having a pot this big is you'll never have to repot it again, and you can build trellising systems like the one that I have here. We did a whole video on that, that will set them up to grow upwards and then cascade downwards in a supported way. And there's enough organic matter, there's enough space here for the roots to go absolutely crazy. So again, the biggest pot you can find, you can use a plastic one if you want to, you just have to watch your watering, which brings us to mistake number two. Mistake number two, common one for a lot of plants, a little bit more severe when you're dealing with dragon fruit is overwatering. I mean, you would think people wouldn't run into this problem because you think of it as a cactus. It is a cactus, but again, it's a tropical cactus. So it wants more water than the average cactus, but it wants less water than the average annual vegetable. The thing that's nice about following mistake number one and getting a nice big pot is that when you water it, there's a lot of soil in this pot and it's gonna stay wet for quite some time. So I come through with a water wand. You saw that in my last video on essential gardening tools. And I just give it about an inch of water a week. But this is a plant that you really do want to dig down in and make sure that it's dry down there because Sometimes it might look dry the first couple inches, but these roots are down there. When you put a new cutting in, you're putting it in a few inches deep, and you wanna make sure that it's dry because you will start to see root rot, and what will happen is you'll start to see these new stem pieces just plop off. And I've had that happen on some more sensitive cuttings before. Breaks my heart, and then of course, you can root this cutting and you have a new one, but it still takes some time. So please make sure you do not overwater your dragon fruit. Mistake number three is the most painful one for any plant owner, myself included, especially when you're dealing with a long growing plant like a fruit tree or a dragon fruit. I mean, take a look at this right here. What do you notice? Well, what I notice is I have not trained this upwards very well. This was curving. I had to fit it to this container when I transplanted it in. And I said, oh, I'll trellis this up later. So if I wanted to, I could trellis this up and train it up. That's what I'm gonna do. But look what's happened as a result. The growing tip of this plant has been pointing down for quite some time now. What I think is happening is that's signaling to the plant I need to put out some insurance, basically. I need to put out new stem pieces, a lot of new stem pieces that are going to actually make their way upwards towards the sun because this one's just not doing its job. So what can I do here? There's a couple things that I can do. Number one, mandatory. I need to take off a good amount of these side shoots here. Every single thorn is a potential budding node for this dragon fruit. And so as you can see, it is really taken that to heart and it's put out a stem piece or a potential stem piece on every single one of these. So I need to take off a healthy amount of these. Now I have a couple options here. There's two stem pieces that are coming out at the actual top of the plant. I can opt to try and train this one upwards and see what happens, or I can opt to take this one off and let this one go upwards. Kind of a dealer's choice. What I'm gonna opt to do is train this one up. You can see the dragon fruit's somewhat flexible. It's not that big of a deal to do this. You're not going to break anything off in most cases, but let's do that after we take all these little stem pieces off. So you want to come in with some sterilized pruning shears and you're just going to clip right at the base. And I know this hurts. I know it's a sensitive moment for all of us here. Some of you are probably squirming in your seats, but it's absolutely mandatory for dragon fruit growth because these are all energy suckers, right? These are all things that are taking energy off of the plant and we want that energy to go up here so that finally we can let it branch out once it gets up towards the top. So these are all gonna come off. You need to be very careful when you're cutting here because if you cut a little too close, you're gonna take off 
the main stem, which you don't want to do. Now, if you have a larger stem piece, like let's say I was to take this one off or, or take this one off, just go ahead and root it. Again, you, you have a dragon fruit cutting there that you can either give to friends, you could sell it on Facebook Marketplace. I mean, some of these dragon fruit cuttings will go for a decent amount. These ones are so small, you can just snip them off with your hand, no big deal. But again, we're gonna signal to the dragon fruit, hey, stop trying to do this side shoot nonsense, focus on that top growth, and we're gonna give that top growth a better position to grow by training it upwards right now. Okay, let's train it up. So you just wanna be nice and gentle. Again, they can take some flex, which is really kind of surprising. They're a strong, resilient plant. But I did let this go too long. Don't let, don't let me saying they can take some flex mean that you can just do what I just did here. This is a little bit too long because I can't really get this one underneath my trellis without risking breaking something off. So I'm gonna be very delicate here. Ideally, you wouldn't have to do this, but we're doing it anyways. Oh, there's a little blue jay over there. Hey, man. Wow, that's a pretty bird. I'm gonna get some B-roll of that sometime for you guys. You gotta see that, but take a look at this. That worked out pretty well. I'm gonna tie this this way just to provide a little bit of lateral force so it's not bending on its own weight this whole time. This is actually pretty nice. So now we have one stem piece just barely peeking up above here. And then we have this one here. So I'm gonna make sure that this one, when it grows, I'll train it up into here a little bit more readily. And so now we actually have a shoot coming out of the top of the trellis. At this point, I'll let it branch as much as I want to. These other ones are a little slower. These transplants came in a little bit later, but that's totally fine. So remember, prune, don't be afraid to prune. Get that low growth off, get it coming up on the trellis, and you'll be in a much better spot for quicker production of dragon fruit. Mistake number four, less a mistake and more a technique to get a little bit more fruiting and flowering out of your plant. If you're struggling with that, a lot of people will, will send me a message saying, I have so much vegetative growth, so many stem pieces, I don't get any flower buds, what can I do? One thing you can do is just cut off the tip of all of these stem pieces that you want to produce some flowers and some, of course, beautiful dragon fruit. What that's gonna do is it's going to stress the plant out and it's going to tell the plant, hey, if you have the potential to produce any flower buds on this stem piece, go ahead and do it because things aren't looking too good for us here. So what you'll see generally is a couple months later, one, two months later, you'll start to see the beginning of some flower buds forming and that's how you know you did a good job. Now, the first time I ever grew dragon fruit, instead of tipping it off, what I ended up doing is I actually just fertilized with a higher phosphorus and potassium fertilizer, like a bloom booster type of thing. Now, that's not going to necessarily force a bloom in the same way that this will. It will support the growth of a bloom, but it won't force the bloom. What I would say is about a few months before you want it to start blooming, you can do this tipping process where you just come in, cut off about an inch or so of growth, maybe that much, and it really, really works to force more flower growth. Mistake number five is not putting enough cuttings in the pots that you're using to grow your dragon fruit. Remember, if you've chosen a large enough pot, it will support more than one dragon fruit cutting. I personally put in four, so I've got my four by four post here. I just put in one on each side, and what that allows you to do is just simply get more production out of the single pot. It's a decent investment. You got a bunch of soil, you got a big pot, you built the trellis, you might as well max out what each pot can do for you. So I have the same variety, I have six different varieties, I have four per variety in each pot. So this is my Ecuador Polora, it's the yellow dragon fruit, my favorite, the sweetest one, certainly the sweetest, maybe not the most complex in flavor, but that's another story for another time four per pot minimum, I would say, because they don't really compete with each other too much. Above ground, you have plenty of space to trellis them upwards. They'll branch out really nicely once they get up there. And then below ground, yes, the roots are gonna be somewhat closer together than normal, but they're not competing as much as maybe a cabbage or a tomato or one of those heavy feeding annuals would be. So that's what I would say for that. Now let's toss it over to Richard for a final dragon fruit mistake. Hey guys, it's Richard from Grafting Dragon Fruits, and today I'm gonna to be talking about cactus for us and how to to control it, prevent it, and even treat it. So cactus rust is a very common disease that happens to dragon fruit during the winter time. And how cactus rust gets transferred to each other is, during the winter time, it gets really gloomy, humidity is a lot higher, so pathogens are traveling with the fog, and once that mist or that dew falls onto it, 
that's how cactus roots will start transferring to your dragon fruits. It's gonna happen and you don't have to worry. I'm gonna show you guys how to take care of it just in case it ever happens to you. You guys are gonna know exactly what to do right away. So I'm gonna show you guys what cactus rust is. Cactus rust are these little, little orange dots that kind of look like a rust on a cactus. So this would be something called very severe. You guys are seeing it starting to blister your dragon fruit and it's gonna spread if I don't take control of this very soon. And something that is a low mild grade, this just kind of started happening. So if you guys see, it's not blistering yet. The little orange dots are kind of like half moons, but if you guys don't control it, it can spread, start to rot your dragon fruit branches and it will start to eat a flesh away. So let me show you guys what I use to help prevent all of this from happening, spread in, treat it, control it, so that way you're gonna have happy dragon fruit plants, everything is gonna be growing fine and you guys don't have to have any worries. So let's talk about the stuff that I use. So here I have hydrogen peroxide mixed with water. So the ratio for this is 3%, 3% hydrogen peroxide and half water, half hydrogen peroxide. This is if you guys are barely starting to notice that the cactus rust are starting to come. I would always use this first to see if I can take care of it and have it kind of just control itself. Then I would go to something a little stronger that's not organic. It's like copper fungicide. It's really strong, but it always works. But if you guys are like me and want to try to keep your garden as organic as possible, I would always use this little mixture of mine first, the hydrogen peroxide with the half water. And this is called organicide. And I use this if this doesn't work as my next step. This is organic and has no chemicals in it. So you don't have to worry about, you know, bombing it with chemicals. And I use three teaspoon per gallon. So in about this bottle, I put about half a teaspoon and I would use this to spray. And last but not least, if everything fails, you guys tried the hydrogen peroxide, doesn't work, it's still spreading. You guys tried the organicide, still going, not helping, not stopping it. And if some, it should callous. You guys can tell once it starts to control stuff because it stops spreading and it turns to like a little scab and it'll fall right off. And if all that doesn't work, it's blistering, it's so bad, and it's starting to take over very fast, copper fungicide will do the trick. So let me show you guys what I would use at different types of level of intensity on the cactus rust. So let's go ahead and use my hydrogen peroxide water mix. So for something like this, you guys, I would just spray these ones. So they look like they just appeared. It doesn't look like they are damaged so much. So. We're gonna go ahead and just give it a good spray. Just like that. And I am doing this video in the daytime for recording purposes, but you guys wanna do this when it's sundown. Make sure that there is no sun hitting this because these can actually burn your branches. So I'm just gonna show you a few examples and after this, I'm gonna wipe it off. Wait for the sun to go down or you guys can do it very early in the morning, but try to not put any of this on your branch until the sun is down and there's not direct sun like hitting your branches because it will burn your branches. But that is an example of when I would use the water hydrogen peroxide. So when would I use the organicide? So organicide is something that might look like this. They're starting to have full rust on there. It is not blistering yet, but you guys can tell that it's starting to appear. So I'll hit some of the organic side on that. And when would I use the big boy, the copper fungicide? It's not organic, so just give me guys a warning, but it's kind of worth it so you can save your plants. You guys have been growing them all winter long. You guys want to get some fruits on the summer portion and you want your plants to be as healthy as possible. So here comes in the copper fungicide. So look at this, you guys, it's starting to blister. There's black spots coming out. It looks like once that pops, the pathogens are gonna spread to others. So you're gonna wanna control that right away. So this is when I would use copper fungicide. So you guys see, it shows you what it does. And just like that, you hit it there and you're just gonna be monitoring this every week you're gonna spray it once wait seven so even 10 days to see any results if you guys don't see anything in the seven to ten days go ahead and reapply again go to the next level of fungicide if you guys need to and if you guys want to skip all that copper fungicide will stop it right away i've always had really good success with it 
and I'm sharing that with you guys. And uh, so that's how you're gonna gauge what to use. And if you guys would like organic, there's options. And if you guys don't mind a little bit of chemical to save your plant, there's also that option of copper fungicide as well. So that's how you guys control and maintain and treat if needed once these cactus rust starts to appear. So I hope this tip helps you guys. And uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave it down below and we'll help you guys figure it all out. Have a wonderful day, bye guys. Huge thank you to Richard for helping out with that final tip there. We did a full video at Richard's house, one of the most amazing dragon fruit growers and one of the most helpful people that I've met in the gardening world. Super awesome guy, so I highly recommend you check his channel out. And if you wanna know how to grow dragon fruit from scratch, I have a massive series here on the channel that you can also check out. So good luck, have fun with this plant. It's one of my absolute favorites to grow. I've had a lot of fun times, a lot of success with it, and I hope you do too. So until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.